Hi guys, this is Vaiduria here again and I was so much overwhelmed with the response and feedback given by you all for my previous tutorial. Also, there were so many suggestions given on improving further and I'm working on it. Hope you all are really getting use of this. And still, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. And today I am here to explain the concept of opportunity cost together with the principles associating with it. And in my previous session, I've told that I would be explaining this concept more detailedly today. Before that, let us look up for a small overview. Human beings in the society are having unlimited wants of which the resources requiring to fulfill such unlimited wants are limited. Such limitedness of the resources gave birth to scarcity. Scarce resources have alternative usages and which led us to make a choice and which gave rise to the evolution of opportunity cost. And yeah, it's opportunity cost that we are going to study today. Before that, let me ask you some questions. What would have you done if you haven't chosen economics? What would have you done if you haven't chosen watching a movie in your free time? What would have you chosen if you haven't ate rice for your lunch? Right now, you would have your own answers in your mind, isn't it? Yes, such answers are the opportunity cost. Now, the term opportunity cost could be systematically defined as among all alternatives when the best is chosen, the next best alternative is sacrificed. Such cost of the next best alternative is meant by the opportunity cost. Let me explain it to you more economically with an example. A man is received with a lump sum amount of rupees 500,000 of cash and had the options of purchasing a land or to put such money into a fixed deposit. And if purchasing a land serves the best interest for this man, he would have to sacrifice the amount of interest to be received from the fixed deposit. So, what we could conclude is that the opportunity cost of buying a land is equal to the interest which he would have been paid on a fixed deposit even at a higher interest rates. And now, finally, we could conclude that the opportunity cost relies upon the existence of the scarce resources. So, the opportunity cost and the scarce resources are correlated. And now, let us look what such resources are. Resources are the instruments provided by the nature or by the people that are used to create goods and services, which is termed as the product. Product is anything that can be utilized to create goods and services. In economics, the products can be broadly classified into as economic goods and the non-economic goods. Now let us look what an economic good is. An economic good is defined as a product which is produced using scarce resources. Some of the main features could be that it can be any goods that incurs an initial production cost, which means an initial value of capital is invested to undergo the production process. The second feature is that any good that the purchaser incurs a price to get it. It means that if the consumer indeeds to purchase a product, a certain value of price should be paid. The major examples could be a car, the fabric and the buildings. And the third main feature is that the economic goods incurs an opportunity cost. That is because such economic goods are produced using scarce resources. Let me explain it to you with an example. This is an advanced car painted in yellow. But what this car is really made of? Yes, it's made up of metal parts. The metal has various usages apart from only producing a car. So at this moment, the next best alternative of metal is sacrificed for the production of this car. So thereby it proves that economic goods incurs an opportunity cost. At this point, I would like to relate another important scenario, which is that sometimes economic goods are provided to some parties free of charge. The major examples could be of the free healthcare, free education, free uniforms, etc. However, we doesn't say such resources to be free goods. That's because 
the party who provides will incur an initial production cost to produce such goods. Even though such products are given free of charge to society, such products involved within a production process and the owner of such goods will incur an initial production cost. Therefore, such goods are termed as economic goods. After the complete description and explanation of economic goods, now you would have easily captured what a free good is. A free good is a product which is not limited when it is supplied, hence it have an unlimited supply at zero price, which is simply comprised of natural resources. Some of its features are, the holder does not incur a cost, also the receiver does not pay a price to consume where the consumers consume such goods free of charge. The major examples could be of water, air and sunlight. Right now, let me ask you a question. Does opportunity cost exist in free goods? The answer is no. That's because the resources aren't scarce. It's unlimited in supply, although there is no cost to consume, where the consumer doesn't pay a price to obtain it. Where we could tell that the free goods possess a zero opportunity cost, where economic goods possess a positive opportunity cost. And now I would like to relate an important scenario regarding with free goods. That is, some free goods are also scarce. Right now, this would be your reaction, isn't it? Yeah, free goods do become scarce in the following occasions. Oxygen for patients. Oxygen is an unlimited resource, but sometimes it becomes scarce for patients in hospitals. That's because oxygen is stored for patients, and if such storage finishes, it becomes scarce. There are also some deaths reported due to such scarcity. The second occasion is that the lack of rain causes water to be scarce. The third one, due to the production practices of human, free good becomes an economic good with scarcity, which is that if the rainwater is saved and used for business purposes, it becomes an economic good. And as I've told earlier, free goods are the natural resources which are consumed free of charge. Such natural resources are broadly classified as the renewable resources and the non-renewable resources. Renewable resources are the natural resources that can be easily reproduced or replenished. The major examples are the air, sunlight, soil and foresty. Non-renewable resources are the natural resources that cannot be reproduced easily. The main examples are the crude oil, gas, coal and uranium. And this is a quick overview among the differences between the economic good and the non-economic good. And now there is a new term called economic bad. It is a good where people pay a price not to get it, but to get rid of it. The main examples could be of the disposal of garbages, where the people pay a certain amount to the health industry to clear out the garbages from the place they live. This is the economic bad. And the other example would be of the waste materials. And the same scenario applies here too. Now let us learn some additional concepts, namely the excludability, non-excludability, rivalrous and the non-rivalrous. Excludability is that, that the people will be excluded from the consumption of the product if a certain price is not being paid. The examples are the private goods such pills and syringes and the club goods such the patent protected knowledge. Non-excludability is that the people will be non-excluded from the consumption of the product even if a price is not being paid. The examples are the common goods such universal health care and the public goods such public information, pandemic preparedness, national defense and streetlights. Rivalrous is that where two or more people cannot consume the same product at the same time and the main examples are the private goods and the common goods. Non-rivalrous is that where two or more people can consume the same product at the same time and the common examples are the club goods and the public goods. And therefore, in conclusion, the concept opportunity cost and scarcity connects with each and every aspect, revealing that such concepts are mandatory for the society to handle and minimize economic problems. And thereby, the session comes to an end. 
Keep watching my videos and any comments, suggestions are warmly welcomed on the comment box. And if you still haven't subscribed my channel yet, please do subscribe. See you guys with the next video. Thank you.